Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Soju Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 33, and we're recording on Monday, March 25th, 2019. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> and Adina. <laughs> Hello. All right, we, we're just gonna do it. All right, this is like the <laughs> fifth time we're recording the intro. I don't know what's going on. I'm I moved recently. Maybe I'm not used to the new surroundings. Probably. But we're just gonna Too go excited. with it. And um, as a friendly reminder, please like, subscribe, download, leave us feedback and questions at sojutalkpodcast at gmail YouTube, Reddit, wherever you are finding us. But it's been a heck of a week. Let's just do this, yo. Let's do it. Let's All right. It. Before we start, we got two forms of fan mail this week. One of them was an Instagram oh, DM shit. from... I'm going to read out the username. It's not their name. It's it's not important who I am, right? I'm sorry we missed your DM for like two weeks, but we don't really check our Instagram DM for the Soju Talk page all that often. So we apologize for now that. We now we do. Now, now we do. Like now we day. do. So DM us all you want, and we will answer your questions at the end of the podcast. And we also got an email from friend of the pod, Derek, and he also gave us some questions, so we will answer them at the end. But let's get into our big new releases. Back on March 19th, Tuesday, we had Daya with Wuwa. I That's what we're going to go with. <laughs> we had <laughs> Jung Seun with Feeling. <laughs> on March 20th, Wednesday, we had Momoland with I'm So Hot. March 22nd, Friday, Taeyeon with Four Seasons. And today, March 25th, Monday, Stray Kids with Mirror. So let's start at the top with Daya's Wuwa. What would y'all think of this? I liked it. Uh, Very retro. This reminded me of... I would say recent Tiara songs, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yes. Yep. It seems like MBK is committed to this kind of funky tech electronic theme, and that's what they're going with. I, I did not like this the first couple listens, but after a while, I, I, I kind of like this now. Uh-oh, here comes the hot oh, takes. No. All right, all right. I got a lot of hot takes today, so y'all better buckle in. But um, it, it reminded me of like songs from like I don't know, like fifteen years ago. That's right. kind of true. I'll give you that. Mm. And retro. I don't like songs from that era. I'm sorry, I don't. It was almost too housey for me. It was and all I, right. Uh... This this week there was a lot of house going on and a lot of funk yes. going on. <laughs> yes. This with a lot of like like retro funk and i was like yeah yeah i'm not digging any of this i'm like, oh. just gonna put that out there <laughs> like i ain't got I, good I was, news for I see, y'all i guess i guess you're either like completely down for this week or not down for this week i was completely down for most of this week same so. okay now i picked the bias in this group this week <laughs> Oh. Do you like pick biases like every week? Like yes, <laughs> yes. I look up all their names. I read their profiles. <laughs> I watch the performances in like the last two or three music videos, and then I pick someone. That's that's the strategy. Wow. So this is purely not based on personality, though, right? Because I, I haven't watched their variety shows or their V lives or anything else. But this is purely on like music video performance and aesthetics. Okay. My bias in Daya used to be Kihyun. Also known as Kathy from Produce um, Season 1. But now it is Eunice. She is my bias in Daya going forward. She was the girl who sang right before the chorus. And she did the thing with the hair tie. And I was like, oh lord. (laughs) Oh, this is the girl. That's the girl, bro. The girl with the big eyes. Yep, she's my bias (laughs) She's got really pretty eyes. Mm -hmm. But overall for me, I thought this was okay. A little bit retro-y. I think this is... An improvement from Woo Woo, which was their last song, definitely. I prefer mm. Woo Woo. I'm sorry. Oh, really, really, bro? Wow. They call their album title was called Neutro. They're new retro. Mm-hmm. I was like, nah, this ain't new retro. I'm I'm sorry. But I would say, mm. please support Daya because they're they're talented. Yes. They have really good visuals. Like I was surprised at how <laughs> visual their team was this week. I was like, damn, the entire time. But. I, th- I think this is a, a one of those a polarizing song where you'll either be really down for it or not like it at all, I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. But let's move on to Jung Seun's song, Feeling, featuring Penomaker. So, Warren, what would you feel about this one, at least? His name isn't Penomaker. All right. Penomaker. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but you make it, making pedos out here. <laughs> 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 but, um... Uh... I mean, I thought it was a good song. I I, I thought mm-hmm. it was like what I expect from solo artists from Starship, because that's who Jung Seun is from, mm-hmm. as far as I know. Yep. Yeah. I know he wasn't produced, 
two yeah. years ago. Not, not much. Not much. I I don't know much about that from you know whatever. But good song, good solo, good single song. I've actually listened to this song uh, more than once. I'll I'm tell not you, a big fan of Penomeko, but even I still liked it. I'll tell you, this is a massive improvement from his previous stuff because. Okay. This was back when I was watching a lot of the um, music shows, like the pre the recordings of them, and his song mm-hmm. was so lackluster for me at the time that I would skip his performances. Oh, gee, mm-hmm. okay, that's but, not a good thing. Yeah, I, I thought it was so like plain and just acoustic and meh. But I was re- I was pretty down for this one, and I think like if this came up on the music show, I would not skip it anymore. That's what I'll say. So I I, I was pretty down for this. I think he's improving. He is pretty raw and young still. So I say we give him a little bit more time, but overall for me, pretty good song. What did you think, Anita? Um, well, I've liked the previous singles that <laughs> God <Goddamn>. damn <laughs> has released. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like both sides, like the acoustic side and the more pop uh songs that he has released recently. So I think he fits both. I like the features he's he's had before. I think he did one with Sheik before. Mm-hmm. Um and that one was really good too. Yeah, I think it was Sick K. So, yeah. Oh shit! I gotta yeah, go check that so out. Yeah, so I think he, he's he's doing a blend of both, and I think that works for him. I have something to say that's positive, and I'm not gonna Ooh. make positive comments anymore anymore after this. So y'all gotta listen up, right? Oh man! I went, and after I saw this uh, through autoplay, another song came up from Chong Seun called "My Na uh, Nai Pada." Uh-huh. It's, it's a ballad, "My Ocean." Yeah. It came out, I think, like, the music video, like, dropped, like, today or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a ballad. And this, I, I never thought I would say this, but it was a good <gasps> song. Oh, snap. What? Okay, that's a good ballad. Wow, what? Warren liked the ballad. <laughs> this is, like, Gross. y'all gotta go check this out. This is, like, different from, like, the typical ballad songs I've heard for, yeah. for, for my impression. So I thought this was new, and I liked it. Jung so- Seon might be your guy, man. He might be yeah. an artist. <laughs> I do wow. like a lot of people in Starship, you know? Yeah, Starship's legit. It's like, honestly, I, it might be top two favorite companies for me in terms of the people yeah. they got. Yeah. But that that's a discussion for another time. We could talk about that for hours. But let's move on <laughs> to probably the most polarizing song this week, right? <laughs> Momoland's oh, I'm boy. So Hot. Mm-hmm. There's going to be hella hot takes, I feel, for this one. Yeah. What I'll say... I'll- all right, let's. Let, I'm gonna commend them before we we re- re-wreck them okay, potentially. Okay, okay, okay. Couple caveats: they're missing Taya and Daisy, as we mm-hmm. mentioned a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that they are staying true to who they are. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but they're committed to it, right? Yeah. The other thing I'll say is it. They are clearly going for, the, like an orange caramel thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's at least the vibes I'm getting. Even with the dancing being a little like easy but gimmicky, that that seems like what they're going for. And then I want to give a shout out to Heaven and Yanu's hair. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> like Yanu's hair was the highlight of this whole thing for me. But now, now let's talk about the song. Warren, you're free to wreck this. <laughs> Go. I don't like it. Like straight I don't like up. It. I, like, I straight up don't like it. I'm sorry. All right, there's a song called Icona Pop's Emergency that sounds almost identical to this song. Like, mm. it's so similar that all the comments in Icona Pop's Emergency is talking about Momoland. Oh, oh. Like, if you ever listen to I'm So Hot and you're like, this song sounds exactly like another song, that's the song. <laughs> like, you, you'll, mm. and once you listen to it, you'll know exactly what I mean. But see, that's a problem, right? And that's a problem internally for Momoland as well, because people are cri- criticizing them for um, Boom Boom and Bam. Mm-hmm. Cause they're uh, like, these oh, are yeah. the same songs, basically. I, I get like they're the, the group that kind of like that's their style, right? Every group mm-hmm. is allowed to have a style. Right. But at the same time, it's like. I would like them to evolve a little more and do a little bit something maybe. different, maybe mm-hmm. like maybe switch it up a tiny bit because people criticized them for their last song that it was just like bam right and then to come back with a third song which could be honestly considered bam part three is is a little mm-hmm. too much <laughs> for a lot of people to digest unless you're a hardcore momoland fan i'll say here's the thing right i'm gonna make another hot take that people might know might not have noticed oh um, snap 
there's this producer called Shin s a d o n g Horengi. I don't know, but I don't know what his English name is. Shin s a d o n g Tiger. It's Shin s a d o n g Tiger. Yeah. Shin s a d o n g Tiger. Wow, what a great translation. But um, he made both Uwa by Daya and I'm So Hot by Momoland. Oh, oh. snap! That Actually, makes that sense. makes sense. That it makes, makes sense. perfect sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the the further I go, the more I'm on the polarizing side with this Shin s a d o n g Tiger mm. guy. Not a fan of him. I wow. feel like Momoland should cut ties with him, oh, find a new producer, what? and go oh. and just adventure oh. a little bit, just a little bit. You know, I'm not asking for them to do ballads or them to do just rock music out of nowhere. I'm I'm, I'm asking for one song that's not in the similar path, mm-hmm. one song to just just test the waters a little, right? Like let's let's use some of that BAM money and put it towards something else for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like but, remember uh, Orange Caramel? Like they had a, yeah, yeah, they had yeah. a variety of songs. Yeah. See, see, the thing about Orange Caramel is like their staple was not that all the sounds sounded the same. It was that they were just quirky, but they did yeah. different yeah. types of quirky a things. Unique. That's uh-huh. why it worked, and that's why it was magical. But Anita, what do you think of this overall? Um, uh, I mean, I mostly agree with what you guys say. I I think what turned me off it was okay. We got to the chorus. It just felt very repetitive, and I don't know. I I feel like the visual as as well, like the video. It it wasn't that eye catching, mm-hmm. and I even remember when they did like the rap part. I think it's it reminded me a lot of Boom Boom, where yep. they like slow it down and the breakdown, right? Oh yeah, the, the dance break was a, yeah like, like the same thing. Formula, but I don't think it's working that well. Yeah, like they just subbed in Hebin for Daisy, who's not there, and it was like a yeah. similar thing. All right, but uh, like if you're into this kind of stuff, I'm sure you'll love this, right? If if you like, yeah, if yeah. you like this, I'm gonna ca- I'm not gonna call their music trashy, but if you're into like trashy electronica, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like not in a negative sense, but you know what I mean. Those earworm, catchy songs that kind of repetitive. Yeah, some people no, are into that. The thing K-pop was really good at about ten years ago ish. Oh snap! No, 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 no! I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It was what we were good at ten years. Ago. Just mm-hmm. changed our styles. So, All right. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on to someone who was around back then. So let's talk about Taeyeon's <laughs> Four Seasons. Now, this was also kind of funky, right? Like there was some funk <laughs> in this too. Like not not funky in a negative sense, but funky in like she was doing some funk, right? <laughs> Like, mm. I don't know how I feel about this yet. I'm gonna need a, cu- a little bit, uh, like a couple more listens. <sighs> I thought vocal quality, of course, it's Taeyeon. She's amazing, one of the best singers in K-pop. But at the same time, I thought there was other solo artists who've come out recently who outdid her. I don't know if that's a hot take mm. or not. Like, mm, yeah, I'm gonna mention a couple. I'm gonna say obviously Beck Yedin's stuff. I yes. want to say. Yeah, Hayes and I want to say Suran have all kind of come back recently, and I would I prefer all of their songs to this one. Oh, <laughs> Ward, Ward, Ward's getting ready. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. I I actually totally agree with you on that. But I do think it's noteworthy that at this point, Taeyeon's been around like what, like ten years, and yeah. she's done a lot of single mm-hmm. solo single stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And if you look at her discography, there like there's so much different genres. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. There's so mm-hmm. much different like 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 types of stuff she's done, mm-hmm. and this is like something she hasn't done. And she, I not a fan of the genre, not a fan of the style of music they're going for. But at the same time, I'm I'm I'm, I'm impressed because like yeah. And mm-hmm. honestly, no? we can't criticize her for going in a weird direction because that's what we want Momo Land to do, right? So. Yeah. yeah, I would say that true. this one might not be for us, but at the same time, I applaud her for taking risks because sometimes it works out well with like IU and PP, right? That was a bit of a change up, and it really stuck. But sometimes it doesn't stick. But at the same time, it's clear that she's an amazing artist, and maybe f- for me, this was not the best song, but I'm sure maybe her next song will be like a banger for me, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like this might be on my next week's like playlist. I'll be honest. Oh. I, I it might be for me after I listen to it like for the whole week. Too. Yeah, it just takes a while. Yeah, mm-hmm. but did you like this initially, Anita, or did it take some time? Um, I think I I'm kind of 
for it or against it. I, I just feel like it wasn't super memorable like other singles she has put out. Um, I love the video though. So yes. It was great. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I think it was just a little lackluster, but I don't think it was bad. Yeah, okay. I'll agree with that. But let's move on to what I'm going to say is my favorite song so far in the entire year. <gasps> Yes. Stray Kids wow. Mirror. I am putting I don't know what I'm going to put on the line but they will win their first <gasps> music show for this song. I assure I you agree. that 100%. Yes. They were trending oh, on YouTube. For me, humongous improvement from I Am You and Get Cool in terms of their music videos. Mm. I oh, thought yeah, this was yeah. amazing and especially that Tiger Woo thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. This this is ridiculous for me i know warren i i mentioned we were talking before the pod started uh, he does not think this is the song of the year really i mean i mean i mean i mean like <laughs> it, it was a good song i'm not gonna lie it was a good song then the drop happened i mean okay what I'll, the drop was the best part <laughs> the drop ruined it completely for me i'll, I'll be what? honest I feel like, like Dutch House kind of like it's different. Different. Yeah. Nah, I I no, I yeah. My my only criticism, the music videos at the beginning was I was hella confused. Like I was like, what is this for a while until the song actually started. It was it was confusing. Yeah, I feel like the music video, okay, for me, the music video and the teasers, I thought it was gonna be more the route of brown eyed girl six cents mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like darker like that kind of genre. so much more bright i don't know what the word is but it's not powerful as dark as I this was yeah, hella more, powerful more more house music mm -hmm. type of thing going on but i i guess i was just surprised i'm not really disappointed that it's not that dark and I also feel like this is the beginning of like a trilogy or something. Yes, I feel like yes, there's yeah. going to be more. So I'm looking forward to that. This is clearly their breakthrough song, though. This is it. Mm. Yeah. For me, top three songs of the year. Obviously, there's Stray Kids Mirror, as I said. Everglow's Bomb Bomb Chocolate. And number three is Seventeen's Home are my three favorite songs so far in the year. If, if we're going for like mm. the first quarter of the year, those are my three favorite songs. But, oh... I I absolutely <laughs> love this song. From the first time I listened to the chorus and the dancing, I thought this was fire. And I highly suggest yeah. everyone go listen to this. Mm -hmm. I thought it was aight. Oh, I thought well. it was okay. Well. I mean, you didn't really like anything this week, so... Yeah. Man, but dude. I mean, I, I do feel like they've matured and I like everything besides the like the drop, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean that's you gotta fair. give me something. You know? Maybe their next song will be the one for you. Like Maybe, maybe. I feel like I will like them eventually. Right now they're just like You gotta admit zone. though, JYP is destroying it right now. Like, oh yeah. They're doing great. They're doing great. Their kids are ridiculously skilled. Like yes. and number one, the best thing of all is they're not in the news for negative things, right? <laughs> like another company. <laughs> oh, so shout out to JYP uh, real quick. But uh, let's move on to our show winners this JYP. week. Mamamoo's Go Go Bebe won the show and, and Countdown. TXT's Crown won their third award for show champion. And then Epic High won two awards for music uh, on Music Bank and Inky Gayo. And there was no show music core. So once again, shout out to Mamamoo, Epic High, and TXT. Y'all had some good weeks. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's impressive to me that Epic High can still win music shows, right? It's kind of crazy. Not it's great <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm down for it it's like yes. four, 40 year old ajashis can still win awards that's pretty cool <laughs> but all right let's let's transition now into what we're currently listening to okay so the first thing off the top everglow's bonbon chocolate still playing that on repeat like i watch it i <laughs> listen to it sorry go on i listen to that song maybe four or five times a day i would say still wow the other thing I've been streaming constantly is Beck Yedin's Maybe It's Not Our Fault and the entire album. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Beck Yedin because it did achieve a perfect all kill on all eight domestic charts. So, yes. 
congratulations mm-hmm. to her. And the last thing I've been listening to is another female solo artist, Suran's Don't Hang Up featuring PH1. Now, we got a couple suggestions from like our fan mail lately to listen to the song, and boy, were they right. She's she's the female Zion T, in my opinion. I haven't heard it yet. She, heard has, the really solid. she has like a, a similar aesthetic to Zion T right yeah. now. That song he did with um Sogi, it's a it's it's sort of similar in the same vein. That one. But those were the three things I'm listening to this week. Little surprising, two female kind of slower songs, and then Everglow, the lit song. So that that was my week. Warren, what have you been listening to? Well, I have also been infinite looping Bonbon Chakla by Everglow. Oh, yeah. La 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 la. Oh my god, that drop is <laughs> quite crazy. <laughs> Um, I've been listening to a lot of songs and artists from the results of Korean Hip Hop Awards 2019 that re- that got uh, announced last weekend. Mm. Uh, you guys mind if I run down like who won stuff real quick? Oh, that's fine. We got time. I I the artist of the year went to The Quiet. Wow. His I've been listening to his album again a lot. Go Yard, good shit. Paul Blanco, Uneducated Kid, good stuff. Um, Rookie of the Year went to Haun. He was a high school rapper too. Good shit. His uh dub debut album, Travel Noah. I've listened to it a couple times. Good shit. Solid, solid stuff. Uh, album of the year went to Language by XXX. I've mentioned them a couple times in the uh in the podcast, and these guys are just pure art. This is just art. You 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 come in, you listen to it. It's just art, art. It just screams art in your face, and you're like, <laughs> oh, this is art. <laughs> what does it scream? Real quick. It's called Language. It's an album called Language by XXX. And it's honestly, the music is unlike anything you've ever heard. I'm not even kidding. But is it art? Mm. Is it art though? <laughs> this, is, this is art. <laughs> you watch the music video and you see the horses and you're just, this is art. Horses? What? <laughs> all right, see, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Hip hop track of the year. Uh, and the collaboration of the year went to Indigo. By Justice, Kid Millie, Noel, and Young B. Mm-hmm. This song, this other song, yes. Indigo, we just go. Mm-hmm. The op uh-huh. fucking noise. You make noise. That's how all you don't hang up so. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> go listen to it. Good album. R&B album of the year went to uh, Your Home by Sumin. Um, it's not really famous, but honestly, it's very indie. It's very solid. Really good stuff. Go check it out. Nice. R&B track of the year went to Instagram by Dean. Hey. Um, and producer of the year went to Kiri Boy. So that's oh, fair. That, that's very yep. fair, honestly. Kiri Boy. Yep. But I would say overall, I know you said the only thing you you wanted an educated kid to win Rookie of the Year over Howard, but oh. yeah. <laughs> but other than that, if I remember correctly, we're pretty satisfied with the awards how they how they panned yeah, out. Yeah. Other things I kind of think is fair, you know. Just an educated kid would have been nice. <laughs> All right, but Anita, <laughs> what have you been listening to? Well, I'm also still listening to Big Gidding's whole album. Mm-hmm. Um, I mentioned last time the, the first track of the album, Night Flight, but recently I've been obsessed over the the track of the same title of the album, Our Love is Great. Oh, that's the one that starts with the woo-woos, right? Yes, the beginning <laughs> hey. of that song is great. All the songs are great, but this one is, is really up there. Um, and then the second one is from produce 101 season two um and it's the it was the subunit or the group called voice under the moonlight and uh the title of the song uh, so i i really liked the song back when it came out and i was really disappointed that almost all of the members from that group got eliminated in the next round you know who was in that group Moonbo. yeah <laughs> 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 yeah but <Check>! I- <laughs> Check. Overall, the song, I don't know, the song is really, really, it's, it's very retro. So I personally like those kind of songs where they're like old school. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. And I, I've been listening to old 101 stuff because of the new season coming out and Let's the go. teasers and the intro. But yeah. And the third song, well, I'll I'll pick one song, but honestly, I've been listening to Hayes's uh full album from She's good, Fine. Good stuff, good stuff. It's really really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so one song that I really liked, but there's many, is Dispatch, uh, featuring Simon Dominic. Hey Simon D. Um, so yeah, this one, um, this one is I think 
most of the songs in the album are pretty mellow, very chill. But I don't know, this one, the instrumental for this one caught my ear. I thought it was really nice. So awesome. I would recommend it. You know, it, it's interesting because it's like, we normally talk about the K-pop on the podcast, but then it's it's cool that we get to do currently what we're listening to because a lot of the time we get to recommend other Korean stuff, which is yeah. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm. I also want to give a shout out to, um, what's his name? The lead singer of Busker Busker released an album. Oh, really? <gasps> and it's it's really good. That's what I'll say. It, it, it honestly just sounds like Busker Busker stuff, but it's just him. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Third album by Jung Bum Jun. I gotta go listen to Yeah, this. so everyone go listen to that as well. But stop let's... the podcast. I need to go listen to this. <laughs> oh, <right now>. <laughs> let's stop. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, we're back. But um <laughs> <no>. <laughs> <laughs> We never stopped. What is this? Alright, but let's 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 go on to our news and events from last week. So the first section is called Big Hit BTS with Banana Numbers. That's Can the I first pause one. you there real quick? Can I pause you there real quick? I just wanna this is I feel like it's always crazy how we like talk about bts just like the fact that they're wrecking numbers every week i'm just yeah. shocked this is crazy you know what i mean oh yeah wait are you is it is, going up are we are we stopping the podcast or are we actually going no no I'm no I just, no I just wanted to, like i just want to stop you talking and just tell share oh, with everyone okay, okay. how crazy it is i, I thought know? you like, i thought you were positive legit positive <laughs> all right no i get you though no 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 but all right no. so here are the news articles so the first one um big hit entertainment reveals audit report and business performance for 2018 so compared to last year, the company saw a 123% increase in total revenue, oh 97% increase in operating profits, and 105% wow. increase in net income. Wow. Oh my god. That's nuts. All right, second one. Pre-orders for BTS's Map Map of the Soul Persona surpasses 2 million copies. Oh my god. So, according to the album distribution company on March 19, pre-orders for BTS's new album have surpassed 2,685,000 copies between March 13th and March 17th. That was six yeah. days ago. I don't have updated oh numbers, God. but it was that much then. What the heck? What the heck? So they will be releasing that album on April 12th, and then they'll be on Saturday Night Live on April 13th. So that should be a pretty historic event. So I suggest you tune in for wow. that. Yeah. Lastly, in in money news, Bang Shi Hyuk apparently has cashed out 52 million dollars of stock at big hit entertainment so this is Mm -hmm. not him like giving up on the company but once you make it big sometimes you got to cash out and get some real money right Mm -hmm. so they so let's put in perspective eight percent of the company is 57 million dollars that much that much (laughs) So wow. that, that's what reports are saying, but Big Hit Entertainment came out and denied it. We'll have to see what happens, but either way, we know he making some money, right? He's making a, mm-hmm. way too much money. So what the heck? I know we normally lead with BTS stuff because they're the biggest group and they're they're making like giant leaps that we've never seen before. But at the same time, it's good to see, like it's good for K-pop when BTS does well because it opens the door for everyone else. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on to... I have I have this t- um this part called SM exclamation point question mark. This is some ridiculous news here. So, SM Entertainment plans to debut a second Girls Generation and NCT with all foreign members. What? 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 Yes. Okay. So, all um, foreign members. On March twentieth, uh, New Daily released an interview with Isu um Isung Su, a production manor- manager at SM Entertainment. So this is coming straight from the source, right? From SM Entertainment. He stated, we are planning a second girls' generation with all Americans and a second NTT with all Europeans. What? Uh, it, says, it says square brackets, Asian Americans. And yeah. Square brackets, so Asian so they, they, uh, they, want, they more or less said, like, we want members born. We want. So you know how K-pop, generally, it's people of Asian descent, right? If it's not Korean, it's, right. I would say almost 95, 99% of the time, people of Asian descent. I'm, we're right. not we're not here to talk about if that's a good thing or a bad thing, right? But right. the fact that they want to make a, an entire girls' generation out of I'm going to all right, let's say Asian Americans is crazy to me. That's like unheard of. And they want to make a second oh. NCT with all Asian Europeans. Like oh, what the heck? I have conflicting feelings about. I this. have conflicting feelings about that too. Oh my god! Okay, girls' generation, second girls' generation, go for it. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but NCT. But? 
I don't know about NTT. I feel yeah. like there's there's still so new that I can't think it would help to have more more guys. Yeah. So he followed up. He My said attention. rather than trying to f- um fit in with the favor of the general public, SM has been creating content for those fans who love SM's own unique color, culture, and music. We've confirmed uh, such wait we're committed that such a fandom is great not only domestically but also in North America and Europe and our goal is to expand it more globally that's big words right it, it is so other things they said with SM's culture technique and production skill we have um, presented a couple localization groups for the for the first time and they plan to have management in Singapore Indonesia Vietnam and in a more joint venture format with local companies so okay I mean that makes sense so it seems like they might be debuting groups in other countries while teaming up with other labels existing in those countries. That makes sense to me, right? Mm-hmm. But to They've... try to break into Europe and America specifically seems like a hard task. I don't know. Here's, here's the thing, right? They they're already kind of doing this in China because NCT yeah. has its own mm-hmm. like China China branch. Like what's it called? Wei Wei something Wei V Wei Wei Something like that. Yes. Wait, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I so, saw like China makes sense. Southeast Asia, K pop's big there. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Europe and America. Little strange. Like, yeah, I'm that's like... a little str- Okay, that's a little dangerous and risky if you ask no, me. No, the, the weird thing for me is like, I get if they want to make groups in like Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam with people from those countries, right? Yeah, that, that makes yeah. kind of sense to me. But if you're trying to do K pop with Asian kids in Europe, that's a big stretch. It's a big stretch. Mm. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to be successful. I'm not saying I don't think they should do it, but it's a big risk um, overall. Also, like, maybe they're going to try to learn from YG and JYP when they tried to make it in the US, but, like, are they thinking they're the ones to break the barrier, right? That's really tough call. But you know what? Mm. Kind of, this kind of this reminds me of mm. AKB, like, it you know, does. It's like, just, it's just, yeah. It's just AKB on a bigger scale with like. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I agree, but AKB stays within Japan. This oh, is got, going about like. They got a, they got foreign groups out there too. Yeah. To, to further reiterate, mm. people, the thing about Asian Americans and Asian Europeans has not been officially confirmed, but that's what almost everyone thinks is going to happen. So. I think it would make more sense if, if you made a group of um, in Europe that includes Europeans, right? Like, at least some of them would make, I think, would have a higher chance of success than trying to, let's say you have a bunch of, like, Korean English people or Korean Germans, and then you try to make a K-pop group in Europe. That's a tougher ask, I would say. I don't know. I feel like, okay, I feel like if this succeeds, this kind of, like, brings... In a whole new era that BTS... It's like we're moving on from the BTS era here. Mm-hmm. And then we're moving on to mm-hmm. this... Like BTS is like, alright, we're gonna start becoming global. Or K-pop is like, I right, it's, it's being accepted globally. Once this happens successfully, it's just K-pop is global kind of. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's different because BTS is like K-pop catered for Korea that's palatable to the world, right? That's what BTS mm-hmm. is. Whereas mm-hmm. this is more like k-pop that was meant specifically for the european and american markets that's supposed to succeed there first before it translates into korea that's a really weird thing to do but we'll have to see if it works or not i'm sure all of this is like they've been talking about forever and i'm sure it won't happen for like five years anyway Mm -hmm. but honestly pretty interesting news all right let's move on to I don't know what to call this season yet, but I'm still calling it uh, Produce X 101. I don't know if that's the proper way to say it yet. I think it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here, here's some har- uh, articles from this year. YG Treasure Box contestants are revealed yes. to be participants in the latest season. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So we, I didn't really watch Treasure Box. I'm pretty sure Anita watched a lot of it, if not all of it. Yes, I did. And the members that will be appearing are... Uh, I don't know if I'll get all these pronunciations right, but it's uh, Midam, Sungyeon... Jun Hyao, is that how I say that? I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. We have uh, Mahiro and Sokwa are the, the ones that will be former members of YG Treasure Box, now on Produce. That's crazy to have actual YG trainees, right? Yeah. On the show. They're going to get a lot of spotlight. 
because yeah. out of the big three companies, only Jun um, Jun So Mi was the only one who's come out for produce from a big three company. So this is groundbreaking for that. All right. So mm -hmm. additionally, the official theme song got revealed. It's called yes. <laughs> okay. It's called Jima, right? I think. Yeah. Jima. So <laughs> Jima in Korean is like opposite, right? So Hajima means don't do it, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of weird that the translation of the song is like don't, right? <laughs> But if you listen to the uh, lyrics, if you yeah, listen to the lyrics, the they're lyrics. like, don't give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give in. You can do it, right? So it, Don't it's forget a, Ichima. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget Ichima. B woo! Underwater woo. squad. <laughs> <laughs> but additionally, uh, Son Dong-pyo from DSP was confirmed to be the center. So mm -hmm. I'm sure he, mm -hmm. he will most likely make the final lineup, just putting that out there. <laughs> from the track record, usually. There's only yes. been one season... Where the center did not make the final team. It was Produce 101 China. Oh. oh. Where hmm. Liza Xuan did not make the final lineup. I know her name. Let's go. Dang. <laughs> but um, I picked my bias already. Oh, oh boy. My From one this? pick. My one pick. Is, is Lee Dong Wook. <laughs> 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 my, my, my one pick is the host, Lee Dong Wook, who oh. has... Confirmed oh. that the show will be on Friday and the and the show will begin on May third at eleven p.m. Korean time. So y'all can plan mm. ahead for that. We got about a month to go before the show starts. But honestly, I'm super hyped for this. Anita, are you hype? Uh, see, okay, I I got into Produce One Hundred One when it first started, and at that time the trainees were kind of still around my age. We're getting to the point where <laughs> most of them are younger than me. All right, so like, during the week what? when I, I posted the video of the performance on our Facebook group, uh, our first Facebook chat, and Anita's mm -hmm. first response back was like, they're kind of young, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's still some that are older. They're, they're few, but they're there. So it's okay. It's not... That Yo, I'm gonna give a bad. shout out to someone who actually might be my one pick. There was a guy who was on the unit. His name oh, is Han mm -hmm. He was on the unit. I'm pretty sure he made the final lineup for that too. But now he's on produce. Shout mm -hmm. out to him. All right, let's move on to. I'm gonna say unfortunate news. So Kang Daniel oh. files for nullification of his exclusive contract with LM Entertainment. Oh gee. So mm -hmm. that, that's not that can't be a good thing. So as we've been saying, he's been, I would say, in contract disputes with LM Entertainment more or less over the amount to create the freedom he has because he's like, I can't mm -hmm. even create SNS accounts. I can't really do much right now. And in his mind, he's like, One One just broke up. This is probably the most popular and most momentum I'll ever have. Why aren't you doing anything? Right. Right. Mm. So he's hired in like apparently a extremely powerful law firm to handle this for him, and they think that they'll get him out of the contract within the next three months. Wow, they think it's gonna be quick. So, so for his for history, right? For historical sake, I'm gonna read off how he ended up in LM Entertainment because you you all are probably like, wasn't he an MMO, right? So right. on January 34th. First, Stone Entertainment confirmed the establishment of LM Entertainment to manage Kang Daniel and Yoon Ji Sung. Since March, since February 1st, when their MMO entertainment contracts ended, they both moved over to LM. So they're pretty much still under Swing Entertainment that one on one was under. It's just a subsidiary. Mm. And okay. it seems strange because they made the decision to stay under, and now it seems like he's regretting it already. Mm. I'm wondering, like, is Ji Sung having any of these problems, or is it just. Him? I don't think so, as much because. He re he got to release a song and he's going to the army and they right. even let him release something before he went to the army. So I would assume he's pretty happy, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess mm -hmm. Kang Daniel just feels like, because obviously he was the star of the group, that he should get right. something big and should be interacting with fans a lot. And I guess he just doesn't feel like he's getting the attention he deserves, which I would say he rightfully deserves because he's a huge mm -hmm. commodity. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like it might get messy. And I think the unfortunate thing is for the fans because I think they deserve a Kang Daniel solo debut, but it doesn't seem yeah. like they'll be getting it anytime soon. So, But we will keep you updated on this one. This is definitely something that's 
if he gets out of the contract this quickly, it might set a precedent to people wanting to switch um, companies, I would say. Well, we'll see where this goes. I, I kind of get mixed feelings about this because it's not, we, we, we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got to talk about this again, yo. This BS. Oh, gee. Oh. So Sorry, I called this. this the aftershock. So this is the follow up of the Sungri, Burning Sun, Cacao Talk scandal thing. I'm just going to read out the articles this week. We ain't even going to talk about this because I'm sick of it, right? <laughs> First one. Five major K-pop companies have lost $520 million due to recent Gosh. sex scandals. So it does not only affect YG, it affects pretty much the entire industry. Everyone's kind of struggling. But the companies that are directly affected, including YG and FNC, their stocks all plummeted. All right, further. Former FT Island member Jong Hyun booked for crimes of suggesting bribery to on-site police officer. And those charges have pretty much been confirmed through leaked chats. Ew. Next one, Sungri summoned by police for allegedly violating restaurant business laws for Monkey Museum Club. So what happened there was he was he filed his club as a restaurant in order to get mm-hmm. lower tax liability. Mm-hmm. Really illegal, and apparently he covered it up through briberies and other things. So pretty shady. Mm-hmm. Next one, Jun Jun Young arrested for filming, officially arrested for filming and distributed sex tapes without consent. That makes sense to me. Um it was revealed that he reset his phones in an attempt to destroy evidence, but police came out today saying, like, he might have deleted the data, but we can get it back. Oh, oh snap. Oh. Yeah, it's not easy to delete that kind of stuff because it all kind of stays on the server. Mm-hmm. The next one, YG Entertainment shareholders held meetings um, to vote on replacing YG and his brother. What? Um, sources said that the vote for YG himself didn't really happen, but his brother survived the vote almost unanimously, so they will both be the heads of YG still. Mm. Mm. But on the flip side, YG is now suspected of improperly reporting earnings during tax investigation. They had apparently been um, reporting earnings as individually for each, each artist so that they wouldn't get taxed the cumulative amount. So the because mm. the way tax brackets work is the less money, the less you get taxed. If you put all the groups together, they, they produce a lot of money, higher tax rate. Mm-hmm. So it seems like they were avoiding taxes that way. Pretty shady. The last one. The scandals are now involving oh, a billionaire from China named Peter Lin and a woman. Her name is Madame. Oh, no. Peter Lim and Madame Lin, who's apparently mm-hmm. connected to the triad, which is a gang in China. What? <laughs> Yeah, and apparently Burning Sun was used as a connection point for their drug trade and where they would launder a lot of drug money. Oh my god. Yeah. What is going on? (laughs) And and the connection to the billionaire Peter Lim is that one of the people Sungri was setting up parties and prostitutes were were was not for Peter Lim himself before before his daughter. Which doesn't which is kinda crazy. So Sungri was involved in setting up those scandalous parties for not the billionaire himself, but his daughter, who's apparently pretty big on social media. So those one, the wow. news isn't that concrete, but we'll have to see what happens. But crazy stuff. Lastly, some quick takes. Brand new Music Boys announced their official debut. Yeah. Oh. Yep, yes. so they said um, we will be opening our official SNS accounts at the end of March. And Idehi then revealed... Um, they hope that they well their be- their debut has been confirmed for May, so you don't have to wait that long to get the brand new Ooh. boys. Ooh. All right, I guess they're coming soon. This is one of the most anticipated debuts after TXT, I would say, because pretty much everyone knows all four yeah. members. It should mm-hmm. be pretty huge. Next one, um, Bulbaga Bulbaga Sachungi uh will be releasing an album on March second. Your boys hype for that. Yes. Yes. And go. lastly, Ailey's YMC Entertainment contract expires, but she will stay with the agency through the summer for her last album's promotions. Mm-hmm. So good luck to Ailey. Mm-hmm. All right, finally, upcoming releases tomorrow on March 26th, Puck Ji Hoon's solo debut, mm-hmm. and JBJ95 will be coming back on Wednesday, March 27th. You have Pentagon. On March 28th, Thursday, you have the Block B Fast Tars. <laughs> I don't know how to say that properly, but that consists. Hard. Yeah, that consists of B bomb, Yukon, and Pio. Pio is killing it right now. And then the final one next Monday, <laughs> April first. It ain't oh April God. Fools, yo. 
Eyes One is oh. coming back. Let's go. <laughs> so excited. All right. So lastly, we All got right. a we got a couple of fan questions. So the first one is from. It's not important who I am right on Instagram. What kind of song would you guys like to produce if you were producers? Mm. All right. I'll go last. Even right. though he oh. said <laughs> Warren needs to answer. I'll go last. I'll go quickly. My first, um, the type of songs, like if I could do electronica, <laughs> like a bonbon chocolate with a hard drop in the chorus, Ooh. I think that would be my type of songs. And if not that, something like NCT Six Sense, because that was some groundbreaking stuff. Yeah. Fun. All right, Anita, what kind of songs would you like to produce? Um, okay, the first one that came to mind, I like everything about it. And I want, I guess I would produce something that can have a good choreo. So I think Man, something such like answer. Red Velvet's um, Dum Dum. That's oh, peak, peak song plus choreo coordination. All right, producer man, in house <laughs> producer, what would you like to produce? I like to. I like to make songs that I like to listen while I take a bath. <laughs> that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. Like chill, okay. kind of lo-fi, kind of like. Uh, uh, oh I yeah. The vibes, you know, like that kind of stuff. You know, like city pop, city city pop. pop. You know, it's like the sometimes yes. it's like the anime girl studying twenty four seven kind of vibe. <laughs> you know, like that kind of stuff. Yes. But yeah, I mean, that 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 would be pretty lit. Check out my SoundCloud. Oh. Man. <laughs> All right, so now we have a bunch of questions from Derek. So his questions are revolving around an article that came out where a JYP employee, JYP, um, wrote a scandalous Instagram post where he said um, it was like regarding the state of YG Entertainment and how Big Bang will never be God. Ooh, G-O-D. Shots fired. G-O- Isn't it G-O-D? Not God. That's Is it G-O-D? Let me make it real I thought real they quick. were referring to G-O-D because G-O-D used to be from JYP. Hmm. I feel like they're very different. That might be it, actually. Hmm. Well, well, let, let's just use some kind of conjecture, though. But um, okay. the, the first question is, um, what are your thoughts on the claim that YG is a house built on sand? Oof. Is there any validity oh. to this? Let's now, <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, so in order to build a house, you need a good foundation. You would probably want some concrete or stone. If your house is built on sand, it means it's going to collapse at some point. So that's the that's what the claim is. For me, I wouldn't say YG is a house built on, built on sand completely because they've been extremely successful historically, right? But what I will say is that YG does have a history of mismanagement. And a, I wouldn't say abusing their um, employees, but shady business practices. There is the term YG basement for a reason. Mm-hmm. I don't. Uh, Warren, what do you think? I, I'm not sure what exactly they're referring to when they say why is a house built on sand, right? But looking at the artist, the musician side of things, because the actor side of things is very solid, no doubt. But the artist side, the artist side of things tends to be, I, I don't like to say this because it's very controversial every now and then. But I do feel like it's somewhat overrated sometimes. Mm. Because what what do we have here? We have Big Bang. We have Twenty One who rode on the popularity of Big Bang to debut, right? And then Winner and when then we have Winner and Icon who struggled for a long time. And then besides that, like, like they they don't have a great success history. Hmm. Sure, they had Jinu Shun. Sure, they had one time, but like that's that's not really like on the lines of K-pop. It's more along the lines K-pop. of. Yeah. Hip hop, yeah. Oh, it's, it's little... um, one thing they were referencing the group God in terms of them being like the oh, nation's okay. group, not like Sorry. being actual oh, gods. So you're correct, Warren. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought they were referring to. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, God had a very good image, and like Big Bang has had a lot of like controversies, you know. So I, I guess that's where that's coming from. I mean, I mean, sorry, going back to House Built on Sand, that's kind of how I feel. Like. I always felt like they were not overrated, but sometimes people kind of like. I I just don't think I just think they ended up being in the big three because of their su- uh successive success with uh Big Bang and Twenty One, mm-hmm. and I always thought I was a little like mm, really like that kind of vibe. 
Anita, what do you think about the claim that YG is a house built on sand? Mm, I feel like, I don't know. I, I don't know if the foundation was really bad. Like I, I'm, I'm using it, the metaphor as being literal. Like if they started off kind of not very good because I think they, they were okay musically. Like they were pretty good in the beginning. I just feel like as it has grown, as the company has developed, it, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a lot of the mismanagement of the artists because yep. they have a lot. Uh, they have so many great artists there, but they just don't know. I, I'm, I'm guessing it's just don't know, not knowing how to manage them correctly. Uh -huh. um, like different genres are like trying to have like a concise genre for everyone and maybe not. I don't know. I, I don't know if I agree with the statement, but I feel like it has seemed like it's unstable. Yeah. So for me, some examples, it's like the the downward spiral of 21 was not their own fault. It was the company's fault. Um, I agree. Blackpink yes. not getting enough promotions. Um, Ihai stuck yes. in the basement. Where is yes. Akdong Suyun yes. right now? All those things come mm -hmm. to mind instantly. So the second question was like, more broadly, where do you see YG Entertainment going? Is Seungri the catalyst for a downfall or are they too big to fail? Is the tremendous success of Blackpink enough to keep their heads afloat? So for me, they I think they are a little bit too big to fail. It won't be a complete downward. I mm -hmm. think that's impossible at this point. Yeah. There's too many people supporting them for that to happen. I will say that things need to change. They need an entire like PR campaign to fix their image, which might include changing some things drastically, like people at the top of the company, right? And then going on if the company can survive on just Blackpink's success. I'm going to say no. Now, here's why. The image that YG has for Blackpink is that they're super successful, top of the K-pop world. But in reality, they're not, right? Hmm. Whenever they release a concert tour, everyone complains that there's not enough songs, Right? Additionally, right now, for the U.S. part of their world tour, you can get tickets for cheap at every single location. I've looked it up. If they're going to claim that they're super popular and can sell out arenas, you have to be able to do it, right? Like, I can go on StubHub right now and go to the concert in New York for, like, 25 bucks right now. Really? That's a little cheap. That's a problem, why. right? Dang. Yo, yo, uneducated oh, kid concert is thirty bucks. All right, let me let me find That's the lowest problem. price right now. Thirty-seven bucks. I can sit at the Blackpink Dang. concert. Busy. Okay, I feel like that's 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 the problem of the mismanage. Is that I don't doubt like the ability that Blackpink has. They yep. just don't have the the material. They don't have any content. <laughs> Yeah, like, never blame the artist. It's completely yeah. the management's fault because they've had enough mm -hmm. time to give them more songs and more comebacks, but they just haven't. And it's a mm -hmm. really shame because they should be at the level of Twice or at the level of Red Velvet in terms of the amount of songs they yes. have, but they're not. They have so few songs at this point that it's. I think it's a little bit ridiculous uh, in general. I don't know. Warren, you kind of agree, I would assume, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I mean, yeah, going back to the original question, I don't think they're too big. I don't think they're going to fail anytime soon. Yeah, definitely. But if I can, if I can, if I can add a point of discussion, we should, because Blackpink is coming back, right? Yep. I, I've seen, I've, mm -hmm. I've been seeing teasers from them. It's a very controversial time to come back. Definitely. We need to watch where this goes. Yep. The comeback is called Kill This Love and it will be on. April fifth is when April it'll come 5th. back. Okay. If if this does well, it's proof that YG is still gonna be alive and mm -hmm. maybe keep their place as big three. If this doesn't do well, I don't know, man. They're screwed. Like they're I would say, they're not. They're, the company's not screwed, but like Blackpink as a group is going. It's gonna be struggle city for them because they might not get another song for like another year, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not. Uh, I'm no, no. I'm thinking the club, the, the whole whole company might be screwed. Oh snap! Okay, we'll yeah. see like what they, happens. If their if their main source of income isn't doing well, like I mean, come on, let's be real. Like, mm -hmm. all right. Lastly, like, sure, Winter Icon's good, but like they don't, they can't live off. Oh yeah, appeal. Well, yeah. Got, That's so they, true. They, yeah, I mean, they always have mania appeal. We need 
Blackpink is important because they're like a good flag of like seeing how how popular they are in terms of general popularity. That's so true. All right, sorry, go on. No, in in terms of the mismanagement, also the Treasure Box two teams plus YG oh and plus Icon and Winner. That's that, ridiculously bad too. Wow. It makes no sense some of the moves they make. But lastly, <laughs> um, but where does this leave Big Bang's legacy? They are undoubtedly one of the most, if not the most, influential K-pop groups in history. But does this whole fiasco tarnish that? Will they be able to continue their post, their careers post sungri and post military enlistment? At this point, for me, I judge Big Bang in terms of the music they produced and their legacy of like as artists, not what they did individually as people, right? Mm. I think we will o- there will always be an asterisk because like look how much of a sh- shit show it became with like the TOP stuff with the top stuff right his um apparent suicide attempt Sungri this stuff Daesung and his car accident G Dragon and his scandals the only one who's really clean out of this is Taeyang right mm-hmm. married man yeah <laughs> there's something to be said about just getting married quietly and living quietly and not trying to do anything ridiculous but for me big bang obviously all-time greats on mount rushmore of k-pop right mm. but these kind of fiasco, these kind of fiascos definitely it's impossible for it to not tarnish their legacy a little right i think that they have enough power to continue being big bang minus sungri after they all come back from the military but when they do come back i bet half the articles are going to be Wow, Big Bang is back as four because X, Y, and Z. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things that will stay with them forever. But I think everyone will fondly remember their first arc, at least. Here's the thing with Korean media, right? Like, pretty much every celebrity that does something wrong goes into hiding for a couple of years and comes back. Mm-hmm. Let's, mm-hmm. let's be. Let's mm-hmm. like mean like whatever whatever it is that they did. Usually everyone comes back. The only exceptions: Yoo Jung Jun, who who tried not to go to the military; MC Mong, who tried mm-hmm. not to go to the military. <laughs> um, who else we got? Sung Lee might be joining them. Yeah, he might. I don't know if he will. But my guess, my guess is maybe in a decade or maybe two, they're gonna come back and they're gonna be, they're gonna cry and they're gonna be like, you know, I feel, <sighs> I feel bad, you know, like there's gonna be a whole TV show, uh, a whole, a whole <laughs> episode dedicated to this. It's. I see it happening. Like, let's be real. I don't like it, but I mean, something like that might happen. Yeah, I will have to see if Sungri can survive this. Personally, I don't think he will. I think this is too big and has gotten too big. But mm-hmm. I do think that everyone will remember the time Big Bang was on top of the world as like one of the coolest mom- like eras in K-pop. But right. Mm-hmm. I know. But you have to look at everything the full perspective, the large picture of things, and this does definitely affect their legacy a little, at least a little. Really unfortunate because... They do have a really cool legacy. It's really unfortunate because it's like someone like Taeyang, who who at least publicly doesn't do anything terrible, now has to live with the effects of one of his, like, delinquent group mates, right? Being a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, really unfortunate for everyone. But, um, I don't know, it's a little bit of a sad ending, but for our podcast this week, but... Uh, it's what we got. So this has been <laughs> Soju Talk, bang. your weekly shot at K-pop. I'm Doug, and we had Warren and Anita today, and I'd like to thank them. So please like, subscribe, download, leave us feedback and questions at SojuTalkPodcast at gmail.com, YouTube, Reddit, wherever you're finding us. We will see you next week when Eyes One comes back. Let's go. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.